morning. Um, sorry for the delay on this one. Um, I think the last video I uploaded was the exhaust, which did quite well actually. But uh, yeah, life's been a bit chaotic recently. Um, had some issues at home and yeah, just been mental. Actually, I haven't touched the car in about a month. Yeah, so I've been doing a little bit behind the scenes. I've been making up the wiring loom for the engine. So I'll come to a little bit of a standstill, and I'll explain that in a minute. Basically, I want to install aircon because this truck gets ridiculously hot in summer, and I want to, be, you know, I want it to be comfortable. So, in doing so, I thought I'd retain the aircon from the from the engine that I'm installing. But unfortunately, even though RPI have got a RPI Engineering, I've got a video on their YouTube putting this same aircon compressor into a Defender. For some reason, mine just doesn't want to fit. So, um, I've got to do some messing around with the brackets. Um, I've had to order some extra parts and stuff, you know. I've, I've loads of research because I'm trying to go through the sort of um, Defender 50th um, route, which which basically uses alternator off a D1 um, setup, which which brings it onto the sort of driver side in the UK, rather than um, the the passenger side as it is currently. So anyway, that's 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 delayed me a little bit. Um, I've also got to make some custom brackets for all the cooling circuits. So uh, I have drawn them up. I've got a friend that owns a fab shop, so he's just you know bending me up some metal to, to do to my brackets. Um, but I haven't got those yet. So what I have got is the wiring loom. So I thought, well, let's. I've been putting it together for about a month. Oh, no, three months. Um, when I've had an error here and error there, mainly over Christmas because the weather was bad. So I've done loads of segments which I'll chop into this, various stages, um, you know, how to start, etc. But this, this section of the filming will be basically installing the wiring loom. Um, no. This section is basically the, the, the wiring completely and I'll, and I'll segment them in at some point. Um, probably before I uh, get into this bit actually but anyway I'm gonna now crack on and start installing um, it's actually the first time um, I've come to actually properly start wiring things in but how the wiring loom is at the minute it's all made off into the fuse box so I've got to install a new fuse box um, it's all made off into the plugs you have to excuse my hat it's freezing um, it's two degrees today um, apologies for that my battery came up full uh, my memory card came up full so I'm not sure how much of that last segment you got but basically I've been putting together a wiring loom for the last two months um, I've had to put a new fuse box in that's all made off but currently it's just apart from the actual plug-in sections um, which is the tie in between the car and the actual looms everything's made off but the actual local connections i.e. the alternator wiring fans etc aircon compressor none of that's finished off until I actually put it into the car so I'm going to uh, start off just by bolting the fuse box in getting it in the vehicle itself and uh, start making that off which I'll do a bit of filming on but probably won't film all of it um, it's just really to give you an idea what I've been doing so I'll uh, get this battery changed over because it's flashing at me and um, I'll bring you back shortly when I've got the, uh, the bonnet up catch you in a bit good afternoon this is the first of the uh, section in a video about the wiring that there is the standard p38 v8 wiring loom got that connection which goes to the p38 fuse box you've got two connections which appear to go onto the engine uh, sorry the car looms then you've got this other loom here this is the 300 tdi um, factory engine uh, loom and it also goes to gearbox and chassis part of the chassis loom so what I've been doing is basically on on the um, 4.6 gems I've basically been going through the pinout diagrams for the various um, ECU plugs there and what I've basically done is I've got my continuity tester on and I've tested which of these 
uh, ECU outputs and inputs go back to the various plugs I've then basically made a key on the defender wiring diagram because you can get the uh, 50th edition wiring diagram so I've made a key as to what pin goes to what All right. and then I've basically gone back and I've tra uh, traced this is the engine side of the plug the plugs into the factory wiring loom um, and I've basically gone back and I've, 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 I've hunted down each individual um, connector so this one's EGR for instance um, and I've traced them back and um, labelled them up what the plan is I've managed to source some uh, a male plug that fits into this and some replacement plugs for the Land Rover side and I'm going to basically make a loom that plugs into the P38 um, sections and then that also plugs into the factory wiring loom so the, the plan is not to cut any of this if I can help it and uh, basically go back and make a new loom that links in with the, the inputs and outputs here to the car uh, from the engine to the inputs and outputs to the car and I've got to add a secondary fuse box uh, and fuel pump relay etc um, which is all fed from this one um, which will be an engine bay fuse box basically I will be replicating what Land Rover did there but in a much simpler form so this is just in the initial sort of stages um, there's a great website called LR Workshop where it's basically you can find the colour of the, the cables and uh, track back as to what each cable does by colour. So that gives you an idea. So so some of these were never never plugged in on my loom previously. So this one here is the trans temperature sensor, um, which which my engine never had originally but obviously the wiring loom was there for it so yeah so that's what i'm doing at the moment um that that loom there is a spare one so just to give you a bit of history this i had from an engine that i bought 10 years ago um excuse uh, the dog snoring this came with the spare engine and this is off my car so there is an engine loom on the engine in the car at the moment so all I shall do now is start to draw up a, a, a wiring diagram which I'll try and show with you at some point as to what I'm going to do to make this plug and play but that's what you have to start with start with your pinouts um, track back your pinouts to your ECU plugs so you can so you can identify what what the, the sort of car side connections are which are these three then track back your car loom so as you know what you want to uh, take from here identify where they are on the wiring loom um, diagrams put in any missing power supplies i.e ecu fuel pump fuel pump relay etc and then and then integrate that into a plug and play loom which i'll show you when i get a bit closer to doing that but i just wanted to give you a quick heads up as to what was uh, going ahead um, at this stage well I just thought I'd bring you back um, give you a quick update on the wiring side of things um, I'm trying to work in with the weather at the moment and trying to be where I can when you last saw the wiring um, there was three poles which was Range Rover Defender and then Scrap Range Rover so what I've done currently is I have made this little section here is to replace it plugs directly into the Defender um, bulkhead loom which goes back to um, dash instruments etc and then this goes back and does you know various things like diff lock um, and bits and bobs I haven't terminated the cables yet because to be honest I've run out of connectors um, but I've, I've managed to sort them so that section of wiring loom does 
uh, transmission stroke chassis and then this section of wire loom basically connects to the brand spanking um, well the the factory connection on the p38 wiring loom the v8 wiring loom so that's engine side that's Land Rover side these are all Land Rover ancillaries and then this there's a couple of random wires sticking out um, so I've got an earth which goes to my clutch relay for the AC because I'm hoping to run AC um, uh, I'm hoping to run the P38 AC system uh, or a version of and I've got an ignition live there which again comes from the factory uh, plug so that's where I'm up, up at the moment the next thing I need to do is I'll need to, to create some brand new power circuits um, which is going to be this relay stroke fuse box mounted in the engine bay so <clears throat> I've got that ignition live there will feed a switched relay like a, a 200 amp relay that will then feed the power supplies to the fuses and then the fuses the fused supplies will then go through the bank of relays to the various items i.e fuel pump uh, fan controls etc um, and how it tends to work is the p38 loom you'll notice there's very little pinned on the p38 loom there excuse the big gash in my finger um you'll notice there's only a few pins in there at the moment because i haven't finished but basically the p38 engine loom then controls the uh, earth circuits to the relays which then controls the items so you're only ever the, the ecu is only ever switching the earths or, or, or mainly switching the earths it does switch a few lives but um yeah you can find various pinouts and stuff so the next stage is make up a little power wiring loom to this which will then have tails that go off to various items i.e fan etc um, and then you'll have some various connections that go back to this and the third connection which isn't it's not here at the moment that's um well it is here but i haven't got to that bit yet so this is my next stage then i've got one more stage which is another p38 plug which will also talk to this fuse box and this wiring loom and potentially some of this as well okay so hopefully that makes sense and uh i will bring you back once i've done a bit more I'm not going to bother you showing how to do the pinouts and stuff, um, but yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of the sort of wiring job as, as a whole. Back again, thought I'd just give you another quick update as to where I'm at. So, I'm running from it from, uh, oh, that's a spare wire, <laughs> Ign ignore this one with the little red tape on it. Um, so I'll give you a quick rundown as to, as to where we're at. So this section here that curls round, that is the uh, under sort of transmission area. So we've got, you know, handbrake, uh, diff lock, um, gearbox reverse, a couple of temperature sensors and a ground. And that comes round. Then we've got the uh, plug-in where it meets the um where it meets the dashboard loom the, the bulkhead loom so that that's where it plugs into the car um then if we follow this down we've got the first of three plugs into the p38 v8 loom so that is the ignition live um that's got to be junctioned out to two two sources um one is a signal to one of the uh one signal to one of the relays in the main fuse box and the other is a signal to the main feed power feed to all of that fuse box then we've got the second out of third out of three connections into the p38 wiring loom currently this is the uh live um and earth to the ecu and the blue cable is the signal wire back to the fuel pump relay. 
so I mean you can see I'm doing it all properly they're all pinned this is a literally a plug-and-play connection I mean just to give you an example this was like 30 quid on its own just this plug um, let alone the rest of the materials so it's not it's not a cheap way of doing it but I'm trying to make things reliable um, and if I just scoot over we've got the new fuse box which you have to excuse these sort of six cables um, what you can't see in this picture is there's a master relay a 200 amp relay which is going to be fed from the ignition live so this will only have power to this fuse box here um, once the ignition live is on this then will feed um, it was it was, unfortunately this type of fuse box doesn't come with a uh, bus bar type live so what I've had to do is feed each fuse individually from one of these cables so that's going to go via a relay and then the the main power cable that's it's rated at 200 amp it's, it's nowhere near 200 amp um, but the main power cable will go back to the battery and then um, yeah so we've got P38 this this replaces the plug on the P38 loom you'll see when I eventually put this video completely together there is a there is a pink connector which basically looks like this and that plugs underneath of the um, the, the P38 fuse box obviously I'm not using that because it's a big bulky item and I don't need 90% of it so I'm then using this this is like main power feeds control wiring from the ECU which controls all of my actual um, power supplies and relays out to you no know, fuel pump air conditioning uh, cooling fans etc so that's that's what we're going to do on that so that's a bit of an update as it is at the moment I've still got to uh, this is for instance this this cable here comes from the 1P38 loom this has got an air link into this fuse box itself um, and this is the uh, compressor clutch for the AC so the, the, the clutch the compressor clutch will have a power feed that feeds out to the compressor so this is the uh, switched earth which basically puts an earth to the relay completes the circuit and then that puts power to the air conditioning upon the signal um, you'll notice there's a couple of relays because I'm not putting them in until I finish them as you can see this is the first finished first finished connection which is the live and new uh, live and earth to the main um, ECU there you go I'll bring you back shortly when I've got a bit more progress we're about another four hours in since I last spoke to you outside uh, so on the video I'll splice in where I, where I was at previously but I thought I'd just give you a quick rundown as to what's what so starting from the front we've got a new fuse box and relay box um, these are new power supplies for like fans um, so I'm having dual fans and fuel pump etc um, that's that there they've got some main lives which will all be ignition let lives fed by this so there'll be a main fused um, 100 amp supply to this and then that will be switched via the ignition system here through to these cables which will live in the fuse box we then have the Range Rover looms so on this one on this plug for instance we've got uh, OBD2 wires uh, alternator um, water temperature etc um uh various earths uh, and that that basically plugs into one of the sockets on the uh, range rover loom this plugs into the large pink socket on the range rover loom this would normally be to the fuse box on the p38 and for instance we've got like a live to the ecu um switch live main power live and you know ac signals in and out etc for that this one would normally be um would normally be um trip computer stuff but i've actually only got one wire connected which is a switched ground to the engine warning light um on this one then if we follow the loom further down this will then 
this is going to run around the back of where the sort of bulkhead lands um, and these wires here are going to fall into the cabin so this is mainly uh, an obd2 plug reading i've got an alternator uh, output which is basically going to pick up off the alternate uh, for the for the rev counter and i have the warning light moving along we then have this is where the standard defender uh, 300 tdi engine would plug into the bulkhead loom um, this is a complete new section all all made up um, so obviously that links through and talks to the various p38s um, signals and then we have a one wire on its own which is the fuel pump wire because on the defender 300 tdi there is three pumps uh, three three plugs on the uh, driver side of the bulkhead on the, in the engine bay one of those plugs has a purple and white wire um, which feeds to a plug through the chassis back to where the fuel pump would be then this is the replacement 300 tdi engine loom what i'm going to call chassis side so for instance we've got some gearbox reverse switches um we've got a gearbox temperature sensor we've got um handbrake cable and we also have diff lock and that's all being protected so all i need to do is just make off the ends on those when uh, when i when i feed the, the loom in same with this one i just need to make off a pin and i'm going to use a factory land rover plug on that obviously this is also just plugs in and this one will feed through a grommet in the bulkhead so i've not made off any of the pins to that this is mainly made off just with a one loose wire to that and then that's just some earth to do there is some um more to do on this so i've got some ac controls that i need to figure out for this section and i've got some powers out which need to go to the fans but other than that this loom's pretty much done so yeah about 15 hours so far i'll bring you back when we'll have the finished article and i'll be plugging all this in so here's a uh, warren loom i prepared earlier first things first i need to make the fuse box there's a load of little things i need to make off first etc but i'm going to start off loosely bolting the fuse box in place so i've already pre-drilled and mounted some rivet nuts here unfortunately as real estate's limited my relocated water bottle is going to have to share the mount when you tighten up rivet nuts, riv nuts when you tighten up rivet nuts if you aren't careful and you over squeeze them you can make the uh, threads a little bit tougher to get in which is what's happened here so what we've got here we've got the connections that go to the p38 loom one two three um, and they plug into these plugs here so I'll plug all those in now and then I'm going to tuck them behind the water bottle in this void here. Then there's a section for an ignition relay. I don't know whether you can see that. Yeah, ignition relay just there. That's going to be mounted on the bottom on the, um, on the wing. And then this, we've got one section that goes to the car, which is all the loose wires. And then we've got another that plugs into the bulkhead wiring loom there. So so the idea of this loom that I've been making is to make it plug and play um, and uh, here hopefully is an example of that. There you go. So that is the connections to the, to the, from the existing P38 fuse box. 
to the new loom that I've put in. We've then got uh, warning light switches, which is that one. And then we've got the general ons and offs for all sorts of bits. I have gone through this into more detail. I haven't actually got the paperwork with me, but that plugs in there. And I actually took that away nicely somewhere. So at this point, the body loom is just there. I'm now going to make off the plugs to the P38 and then when that gets pushed through it'll all get pushed through and pulled through together. So P38 loom. And that was the whole point to literally make it plug and play. Rather than watch you me wrestle with this, I'm going to just pull that through now and I'll bring you back shortly. So guys, wiring looms, apologies if there's any wind noise, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm away from the camera so I can't really do a lot about it. So the wiring looms, I've started to pull the wiring loom round. Now I've got a chassis loom that goes basically and does the gearbox, handbrake, etc. I've got a plug in just there, which is going to plug into this plug here which is the um, bulkhead wiring loom for your gauges and whatnot. Got a bunch of cables there that need to go through, but I just need to get a grommet for them. Not a grommet, a gland. It's over there, it's the next job. But I thought I'd just show you what I'm doing here. So, I've got a bunch of common earths. So, what I've done, I've grouped them all up, crimped them with the proper crimpers. I don't know if you can just see them. They're uh, hydraulic crimpers. And I have each trunk all the terminals on that. This is the factory P38 power supply which would normally go to the P38 fuse box. That comes from the starter motor which then comes from the battery. I'm going to install a mega fuse on this and then that's going to then basically link onto my lives which is this cable here which, which then feed my auxiliary fuse box. That's going to be done through um, that's going to be done through the um, basically the ignition live. So the ignition live switch is a relay. The relay then makes the power between this, which can be fused, to the main supplies to that. So none of these supplies will be live until the uh, ignition is lived up. So I'm just going to crack on with that now, and I'll probably do a bit of a close up in a bit. Um, after I've done that, the next job is starting to pull the cables into the car. Um, which I've got to then unband them. The other cables you've got here is cooling fans and air conditioning and alternator. There's no point starting to clip that up yet until I'm ready. So I'm going to start on this area and move backwards. So how these work, you've got two posts which are insulated. Um, you have a mega fuse in between them, like that. This one's rated at 125 amp, um, but everything's fused individually anyway. Then you'll have mains going on, mains coming off to the switch, to, uh, to the switched relay. Then obviously when the relay comes on, the live will come from here through the fuse, through the relay and back to the fuse box. So the fuse box is mounted up. Cable's gone through the fuse, that's just tucked away. I do need to make this earth off just there, but that's fine, I just took it to one of the bolts. Main ignition switch is in. Cables are all tucked up nicely and running round. They then go behind the fuse box through that bit of a bulkhead. Excuse the um, snotty welds. This bulkhead's actually being changed. I've actually got a, a, a new one to go in when I get a minute. 
That now just needs to plug into this. Um, and then that'll be the gauges and everything connected. This little purple wire basically needs to connect onto one of these wires down here, one of these three plugs, because that's the fuel pump feed. Um, and then it's just running this through to the chassis, um, chassis side, and making this off. So I'll uh, bring you back in a bit. So here's a little close up. This is um, part of the Defender's loom. This Defender's a 300 TDI, but the actual, that there is part of the chassis loom. And if you can see, it's just got, it's got a pin in there with a purple and white wire, and that is basically for the fuel pump. So all I've done is pulled the little blanking grommet out, made a connector off, actually pinned a connector, uh, and all I'll do is just pop that in, in the hole, difficult to see on camera, pop that in there, and that'll be it, done. Fuel pump wiring complete. So I'll just do that now quickly. And there you can see, that's pinned in nicely. So I'll just put the leather, yellow cover back on and that can be plugged in. Well, we're a little bit further on there in the day. So fuse box is in, ignition switch relays in, fuse box main power is in, fuse is in. I've started running the cables around. Um, engine temperature fan switch is in. I've got my one fan power supply in, the other fan's power supply is just there. And that's this side of the loom terminated. I've just got this to tuck away. That's the alternator, um, alternator light, uh, rev counter. Works off the uh, alternator. Uh, wiring loom then goes round the side. It tucks in through a grommet there and then plugs into the existing loom there. One loom goes underneath. So I've got to get underneath the car now and make that off. Inside the OBD2 switch is in. Um, I've just got to mount up the warning light, which just needs, just needs literally mounting. And the fan override switch. Um, these are existing wires to some gauges that I used to have um, just there, so I'll do something with them in a bit. Um, and then that's it then. Wiring's pretty much complete. Just need to make off underneath the car now. Gearbox switches, etc. Um, until I get the uh, new fans. That's pretty much the wiring finished. Um, I've had to get underneath and just make off the last things, um, which I've just done. So... All that's left to do on the wiring now is air conditioning. I've got plug in the ECU and mount it, and then the wire into two fans, which are going to be on here. And that is that done. Which I'm not. I'm not going to bother holding on for that because, uh, yeah, I need to order the fans and stuff. So that's fuel system, exhaust system, wiring, throttle, gearbox. Everything mounted, oil cooler system done, automatic transmission coolers done. Um, anything left to do now is air to the engine. Which so I've got to get. A, I've got an airflow meter. I've just got to get a fuel, uh, an air filter. Um, so there's just air and water, and then this is done, ready to go. Morning, guys. <coughs> First off, thanks for uh, watching the video so far. So I'll give you a quick update. So I've currently finished the wiring diagram, uh, the wiring video, um, but it wasn't 100% finished. And to be honest, cards on the table, there's been two faults. Um, one my fault, you know, one of them was completely up to me. One of them was an issue with the Land Rover documentation. So I have tried to start the car last week and <coughs> it's, um, it's not starting. The fuel pump's not priming. Um, unless I do it manually by hot wiring the relay and the car's not firing because it's not getting spark. Um, it did fire briefly last week, um, so there's, you know, 
I've not got a concern with the ECU because ECU is an unlocked item. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's not it's not it's not running. So the issues are um, the power supply to my relay, which which basically controls the ECU fuel pump, etc. The ignition live to that drops out when I'm cranking. So I need to wire in a secondary relay in the fuse box. Luckily, I've got one spare. Um, that feeds off the cranking circuit. So basically this will have a live cranking. Once the crank stops, that'll drop out and it'll switch over to um, switch over to ignition live. So that's what I'm gonna do this morning. The other issue I've got is the uh, fuel pump priming. So the Land Rover pinout diagram says that the fuel pump is controlled from the ECU and it says on the pin out that it's alive that switches the ECU but it's not it's a ground because it has permanent live from well so it says an ignition live from the P38 fuse box and what it actually does is switches the negative um, the wiring diagram shows that but the pin out which is what I mainly worked off uh, shows it's a positive so basically the relay here isn't switching on because it's got a positive from the, what I thought was a positive from the the, uh, the ECU and a positive from the fuse box. So first things first, I need to swap that out. So that will have a switched ground from the ECU and a permanent live from the um, fuel pump fuse. And the second thing is I need to wire in a secondary relay that keeps power onto this while it's cranking. Um, I'm going to start off the the fans, the cooling pack fans are now in. Um, I'm going to start off by making off some special plugs for that because the, the, they come from the factory bullet connectors and they're just a bit naff. So I've brought some I brought some two pin plugs. So that's what I'm going to make, do first, just to get it out of the way. It's a job done then. So the fans will be plug and play um, based on that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to isolate the battery and. Um, get on with doing these little uh, wiring, wiring mods. I'm not going to film that because this is really really difficult to do. Uh, it was difficult to do on the floor because basically there's so much wiring in this case now that, um, that the bottom covers are difficult to get on but we are where we are and we've got to do what we've got to do so I'm going to do that and uh, I'll bring you back for a, hopefully a first start and I'll include that in the wiring video because um, we have got some wrapping up to do I've still got cooling circuits to do. I've still got to swap over the alternator and air conditioning side. And I've still got to connect the uh, power steering. So I'll bring you back in a bit. All right then, um, apologies for the filthy t-shirt. I've been uh, working on the Land Rover. Um, I've just done the little wiring mods. I've uh, run a separate relay in now for the cranking live and I've switched over the live uh, terminal on the uh, fuel pump relay. So we're going to have a go at starting it and turning it over for the first time. Well, as you saw, that went pretty well. Um, there was a little bit of smoke because um, I, I did drop some oil in the bores um, about two months ago, three months ago, um, just to obviously uh, ease it up after starting for so long. So there wasn't much, just a few teaspoons, if that, of oil in um, in there. So yeah, hence the little bit of smoke. So now. What I need to do is make some brackets up to make the air, uh, ECU 
I've got the airbox to connect up. Um, I've got a filter um, for that. So I've got the air system to connect up, which I'll probably have to make a bracket for. Uh, water pipe work and tidy it up. And uh, conversion's done. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And um, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> you know, it's been a lot of work. A lot of work. And, you know, I'm no, no means professional at all. So, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.